Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another Fast Strikes webinar. Today, we're going to be going over the commission uh, solution in the system. It's very easy to set up and actually a very effective sales tool to increase your sales at your stores and uh, benefit your employees, help them become better employees. Just a great way to handle all that. First thing, we're going to be looking at the uh, way to build the campaign. To do that, you click on the pricing module from within Director, and you'll go to the Commissions tab. I've already got one here built, but we're going to build a new one. Just so we can look at what's here, I'm going to click on the Jewel Starter Kit Spiff and then click Edit Commission. This will bring up that Commission Campaign Details screen. We have a campaign name, a start date, a stop date, the campaign type, which is one of two ways, a flat spiff or a percent spliff, spiff, and a value. The value, of course, for a flat spiff is going to be a dollar amount, and for a percent spiff is going to be a percentage. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. We're going to build a new one. So to do that, we click on the New Commission button. I'm going to call this, we're going to make it on protein bars. Let's call this uh, Special K. Let's call this uh, Spiff. And just for my notification, I'm going to put percent. I'm going to have that for this month through the end of the year. This I want to be a percent based one. And I'm going to set that for a 5%. Spiff. I'm now going to save that. So we now have built the what, we, what I like calling the header, the container. We want to put items to that, the details. We want to assign those items to that header. So you can do this in one of three ways. I can edit that commission. I can then choose add item. I can search by UPC, vendor part, or description. I want to add that item. It adds it to the campaign. I'm going to go ahead and remove that. I'll show you the next way. We go back to the price book and item details. I can search. I can pull that item up in the item details lookup. Under additional information, in the general information block, I choose that. There's a commission area. I can click change. This has a drop down that has all the available commission campaign options. I'll choose special K and I can add to campaign. Close, save, and save. That adds that item to this commission campaign. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and remove that and show you the way that I personally prefer. So both of those previous ways, those were item by item. You're adding them to the campaign one at a time. There's a much better way to handle that. If you go to mass updates, once this loads, you will have a, an option to add items by mass. And mass updates is a fantastic tool. We're going to have a separate webinar on this at a later date to go over all the power and the things you can do with mass updates. You can add items to commission campaigns by going to the Utilities tab down below, and then there's a Commission drop-down. So first and foremost, anytime you're in Mass Updates, you need to take note that anything you do down here is going to affect that many items. So in my case, 8,398 items. I can't just select what I want to select and then add and then do that. I actually have to filter. That's where it's important to when you're building your price book, you put tree information. The more detailed your price book is on that tree, the more efficient mass updates will function, the more detailed you can run your reports. Basically, simply put, what you put in is what you're going to get out. So in this case, whenever I look up my special K, I can see that it's under snacks, 
protein bar, special K. So I'm going to go to mass updates. I'm going to go to my snacks major category. I'm going to click the drop down. I'm going to go to my protein bar, click the drop down. I'm going to go to my special K. There's all my special K atoms. So now I'm safe to actually choose the commission drop down, choose the spiff add, because I'm only going to be adding those 12 items. So I'm going to choose add. That added those items to that campaign. Now, if you're in a corporate environment, remember, just because you added a corporate does not mean it's immediately effective. You have to go to the queue and then send that queue down to the stores for that to take place. So we've built our items. We built our commission campaign. We've added those items to the commission campaign. What's next? Well, the next part we have to do is going to be in the POS. So let's open the POS up. I'm going to log in. We need to enable a setting. So we go to actions, we go to settings, we go to settings, and we go to register settings. There's an option here. I've already got it enabled, but it's called prompt for salesman. What this does is if this is unchecked, anytime an item is sold that is on a commission campaign, the cashier automatically gets credit for it. Well, that may not be actually the case in how you want it to function because you could have a cashier and a salesman on the floor. If the salesman is the person who makes the sale, they deserve the credit, not the cashier. So whenever you have this prompt for salesman checkbox checked and you save that, that means that if an item is sold in a, on a commission campaign and you have multiple employees clocked in at the same time, the system is going to prompt which employee made the sale. That way, the correct employee gets credit for that sale. It's based on who's clocked in and who's clocked out. Now, there's also a button that you can utilize called the, choose, called the Choose Salesman button. Whenever you make a sale, you can choose, you can manually choose this button to choose the salesman, but I prefer just to have the system automatically prompt me. And anytime you sell an item that's on a commission campaign, it automatically prompts you as long as you have that Choose Salesman active and you have multiple people clocked in. Now, there's one more functionality to talk about when doing these commission campaigns. It's the leaderboard. And I have my leaderboard button under the cashier functions. This is a great way for the cashiers to see where they stand on what they've earned so far in this commission campaign, how they compare to other employees, and how their store compares to other stores. If you see a number and you, you see how much extra you're going to be making, you're going to keep wanting to push that number higher and higher. If you see other people, it's going to drive that competitive spirit, which will increase sales, which is a great thing for everybody. So let's build this button. I'm going to go to my actions. I'm going to go to settings. I'm going to go to the button editor. You can place the button wherever you want. I always put mine under cashier functions because I like to have my panels organized. Anything that's on the main screen, that has to do with the sale. Some kind of function in the point of sale itself. The cashier functions, this will be like leaderboards, price change reports, pay in, pay out, starting till, things like that. Functionality for the cashier to utilize. And then subtotal will be, of course, forms of payment. So I'm going to delete this button. Let's build it from scratch. So I'm going to choose the button here. I'm going to choose Edit Button. When you choose the button type, there's a drop down. It'll show you all the different button types. Well, there's not a button type here that says Choose Salesman or Leaderboard. So that's what we call a Launch Module button. I'm going to scroll to Launch Module. I'm going to make this button size medium button. Let's call this Leader board. I'm going to give that a background. Let's say that I make it um, green. I'm going to give it a glyph. 
module. This is going to be, when I choose this little arrow, this will bring up the select module. This allows me to have the choose salesman button functionality tied to this button, the commission report. If I want to do labels, if I want to do a new item report, open a certain website, open a certain file on the computer, price change report, house cut invoices, a time clock button, or working orders. In our case, we want the commission report. That's the leaderboard. So when I select that and choose save, I now want to update this. So update. My leaderboard button is in place. I want to save my changes. So I'm going to choose save panel. And I built that button now. I've got one more step to make sure that this button doesn't ever go away. I want to save this to my database. So I choose cancel, settings, settings, register settings. And under POS panels, I want to choose save panels to DB. What this does is this will allow those panels to be saved in that database, meaning if you have multiple registers, you only have to make this change on one register because the other registers will automatically pull those updated buttons, updated panels from register one. If you're in a corporate environment, you can pull these updated buttons from the store to corporate and then send those buttons down to other stores. In the long run, that can save you a lot of time instead of having to build the same button over and over and over again. So let's look at that button. I'm going to open the point of sale. I'm going to go to my cashier functions, and there it is. So when I choose it, that brings up the leaderboard. And you can see that I've already sold two of that Jewel starter kit flat spiff today. Let's make a sale and add to this commission campaign. I'm going to choose the Jewel starter kit button. I've already got that item programmed into this button. When I choose it, so I have my age verification because I've got a POS flag designating that it requires to be 18. And you'll see because I have two employees clocked in, I have the select salesperson. Who's going to get the credit of that spiff? I'm going to choose the manager. Subtotal in the sale. Now, let's say that I clock out. I'm going to exit POS. I'm going to clock the cashier out. I'm going to log back in, this time under the manager. I'm going to do that same sale. Jewel starter kit. Notice I didn't get the prompt for the choose salesman. That's because the cashier is clocked out. If there's no one else clocked in, it's going to assume that because no one else is clocked in, no one is working. So the cashier is going to get the credit. So let's log back in under the cashier. So we'll continue to get that prompt. And let's do the new spit that we made, the special K. So I don't have a button programmed for the special K protein bar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the item search. Special K. There's one of the protein bars. I'm going to choose that. Okay. There's my select salesperson. I'm going to choose the cashier. Choose OK. Subtotal. And then cash the sale out. I'll do one for the manager. I'm going to choose the special K. This one, I'm going to have that sell for five. So let's take a look at that leaderboard. I'm going to go to cashier functions. I'm going to go to leaderboard. And we can see now I have one sell for the cashier for the special K. They earned eight cents. And I have two sales for the jewel. I can change that to the last seven days, today, or month to date. Now, when we view the actual leaderboard, this will show you, if you're in a corporate environment, the top employees in your company, and then, of course, your, how you're performing at your store, driving that competitive spirit. And then over here, I'm not sure if you'll see the, yeah, let me move that where it shows I'm speaking. You'll see the top stores in the area. So you'll, that's, help, that's helpful to drive that competitive spirit and increase sales for everybody. More money for the cashiers and more money for the company itself. 
you can choose the individual campaign by choosing this drop down. This works with both commission campaigns and also uplifts if you utilize uplifts. Now, uplifts is a completely different thing. It also can directly tie into the commission. And we're going to be going over that next week, utilizing uplifts, building one, editing it, running it through the registers, building an advertisement for it, the whole nine yards. So that is how the POS handles commission campaigns. So I'm going to go ahead and log out of the POS. We're going to go back to director. So let's say this commission campaign is over. Um, corporate or well, the store is ready to pay that out. So we're going to go to our report section. And under sales reports, there is a commission sales report. I can view, let's use just today, the commission sales grouped by store. This will show me store one, store two, store three, how they performed on each campaign. I can choose by employee. This will show how each employee performed. And then I can also choose grouped by store and employee. That'll show that data. You can break it down even further to where instead of all campaigns, you're doing individual campaigns. Adjust your time frame. And then of course, when you're in a corporate director, you have the hyperlink down here that says choose stores. You can choose one or multiple stores and that data will be populated based on what is selected down there. Well, that is what I had for us today. I hope everybody learned something new about commission campaigns and how they can benefit you. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and let us know. And I look forward to speaking to everybody next week. We'll be going over uplifts. Thank you.